The most common greeting in Siswati, the national language of Swaziland, is Saubona. It's used as a general hello, but its literal meaning is I see you. This is the story about how one woman in the tiny kingdom of Swaziland taught me about the power of being seen and about the force of inspiration. It's 2003 when I moved to Swaziland as a Peace Corps volunteer doing HIV and AIDS impact mitigation. And it's 2003 when I meet Nomsa Masugu underneath this great big marula tree that signifies the center of a community named Busileni. When she sees me, she walks right towards me. And I see that she's wearing this shirt that says doggy style written on it. And when she smiles, I can see the space where her front tooth used to be. Cece, she says, are you here to help? That's the first thing she says to me. And when I say yes, she says she would love to be a part of it. From that day forward, the two of us are nearly inseparable, spending almost every day together over the next two years. And when my time in the Peace Corps comes to an end and I return to New York City, the thing that I miss and long for the most is my friendship with Nomsa. Fast forward to 2008, when I call Nomsa from New York just as I do every single week. When she picks up the phone, she doesn't even greet me. The first thing she says is, Cece, I've decided to run for a position in the Chief's Inner Council of Busseleni, which is the internal government. And when she says that, I am shocked because I know from my time in the Peace Corps that there has never been a woman in that community who has run for a position before. But I can sense how excited she is, so the only thing I can think of to respond with is when are the elections and I will see you then. So a few months later, I find myself back in Swaziland for the first time post Peace Corps. I will continue to return every year for the next 10 years. Noms and I are standing on her homestead, which sits atop this hill that overlooks the entire community of Busseleni. The Mkonvo River is flowing below us, and the hills and the mountains are covered in lush greens. And Nomsa turns to me and she says, Sisi, today is the day of the days. Then she grabs my hand and she puts it on the underbelly of her chin and she says, See, I even shaved. And we both laugh hysterically. Because you see, Today in Busseleni is nomination day, which means for Nomsa, it is the day of the days. I've returned to Swaziland to witness Nomsa doing something that no woman has ever done before in this community. She's running for the position of Bukopo, which is community developer, something she's been doing for five years without title or recognition. We leave her homestead and we make our way find, uh, following windy dirt roads down to the center of the community. We pass, pass Babe Ngambule's home on the left, and we pass Malusi and Ngobile's homestead on the right, and everyone waves and greets Nomsa with a Salbona Masugu. When we get to the center of the community, most people have already gathered underneath the marula tree, men to the right and women to the left. And when I look at Nomsa, I can sense both the fear and the excitement in her face because she knows that she needs 10 hands to be raised in support of her in order to get her name on the election ballot. We go take our seats next to a group of women friends just as the chief is standing up. Now what happens is people in the community will shout out names and then 10 hands must be raised in support of each individual person. When those 10 hands are in the air, then that name gets put on the election ballot. So the chief begins and he asks the community, who here would like to nominate for position of Bukopo? And it all happens fast. Names are being shouted and hands are being raised. And before we know it, there's already been five people nominated, but Nomsa is not one of them. When there's a quiet lull that comes over the crowd, the chief asks one last time, who here would like to nominate someone for the position of Bukopo? And we hear this quiet voice coming from the left. Asugu. Because it's quiet, the chief motions for the person to rise, and we see that it's Nomsa's best friend, C. Bongile. She stands up with this really cheeky grin on her face, and she shouts, Nomsa Masugu! And Nomsa and I look at each other in shock, and the chief motions for Nomsa to stand up, and she does like a deer in headlights, yet confidently. And the chief asks the community, who here would like to support this woman? And we wait. And we wait. 
no hands rise. And the chief asks again, who here would like to support the community? And we see one hand rising in the left, and I see two, three, four hands in the air. And then I realize that it's not just women who are raising their hands. I see men raising their hands as well. I see Beggy and Manla with their hands high in the air. And before we know it, there are 11 people with their hands up. There are seven women and four men who have just, for the first time, publicly voted for a woman. There are seven women and four men who are looking at Nomsa and saying, we see you. The story doesn't end there. Nomsa gets her name put on the election ballot and she campaigns throughout the community. She creates her platform around sharing her stories with people in hopes of them sharing their stories in return. So her platform is truth and vulnerability. Her platform is storytelling. Nomsa does not follow any paved road. She carries a machete and she walks through the bush and she paves the way herself. It's election day and out of 800 votes, Nomsa loses with 56. But Nomsa has 56 votes. As the two of us walk home together towards her homestead, I turn to her and I ask her how she's feeling because I think I assume she's feeling like I am, which is sad and disappointed. And she grabs me by the shoulders and stops me right there in the middle of the road. And she says, Cece, this is not the end of the road. This is just the beginning. And suddenly I realized in that moment that for Nomsa, this was never about winning. She had already won years ago. And as we continue down those very familiar windy dirt paths, I smile as I remember the day where Nomsa and I met under that great big marula tree, the day when inspiration chose me and inspiration's name was Nomsa.